Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain and today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about Gaslands with the subtitle Post-Apocalyptic Vehicular Combat. Now this game was written and designed by Mike Hutchinson and was published by Osprey Games. I'm going to show the Osprey Games logo there on the back. So now Gaslands is this book. When you buy it, you you just get this paperback book here. It's got a really cool illustration on the cover, which shows some like combat racing and the post-apocalypse on it. It's got uh, some really cool illustrations inside. This one's one of my favorites here. It's got all the rules in here and the storyline, and also lots of pictures of customized Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, because this game is a miniatures game that has no line of miniatures for it. It's It's meant to be used with Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, which is a really interesting concept. So you can buy Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, and you can alter them to your heart's content to make your race teams with them, or you could just use them as is. There are plenty of, of Hot Wheels cars in particular that even have weapons on them and such, which can be used to great effect in this game to represent cars with guns mounted on them. So, now, because there's not a box to open, there's not a huge amount to talk about in regard to components, we're just going to head over and we're going to run through the, the kind of things you can do in this game rather than run you through a few turns since the first few turns of a game of Gaslands are usually kind of uneventful. We're just going to actually run through exactly how to play and tell you some of the options and some of the things you can do when taking your turn. How to move, how to attack, how to ram other vehicles, how to throw Molotov cocktails at them. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to talk about how this game feels. I'm going to review it and rate it and we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. Okay, so here we are set up to play a game of Death Race in the game Gaslands. Now, Death Race is the scenario that they suggest you start with, and if you play even by rolling on the random scenario table, Death Race is the game that you're going to play the most often. And in my opinion, Death Race is the, the game that is most interesting and makes this this games stand out the most, so this is the one we chose to show you when showing you how to play this game. So you have to set up your gates around the table for the race. You need a, uh, a die somewhere to show you what gear phase it is. We start on number one because uh, each round will start on gear one. And you need to set up some terrain. So in this case, we set up some crates on the various gates. We set up a big building uh, in the middle of the table and a couple of wrecked cars to avoid. We then each also, of course, had to have made our own race list, our own um, race team list, if you will, by purchasing them out of the 50 can budget that they recommend you use in the book. So once we're set up, we're going to roll off using some regular six-sided dice to see who's going to get pole position. So we each are going to roll a die and see what we get. I got a two. Lynn got a five, so she's going to get pole position. We like to use this little coin we have sitting around here that says first on it, and I will give that to Lynn, and she's going to start setting us up in a moment at the starting line. All right, and so since Lynn won the roll-off for pole position, she's going to choose one of her cars to set up behind the starting line here. Now, the, the starting line can be as wide and can have as many lanes, if you will, as the number of players playing. And the, wheel, the front wheels have to be behind the starting line to set up. So since we're only playing two players, I'm going to take one of my cars and just put it next to hers, and that will be the final lane. So I'm taking this car here and putting it there. Now it is her turn again, so she can start on the second lane. She can put it behind either car. It's wherever she wants to put it. And we keep going in this way placing our cars here behind the starting line until we have finished setting up all of the cars and then we're ready to go. Now, once you're ready to go, we get to start taking our turns. So for our turns, the first thing you do is you can spend audience votes if you want. Now, audience votes can be spent to do a lot of different things. For instance, they can, they can be spent to remove hazard tokens from cars or give hazard tokens to enemy cars or even if you get three audience votes you can even respawn a car back behind the last gate it had passed to get it back in the race but you don't start with any audience votes so on your first couple turns that's just not going to happen 
Uh, audience votes are earned, uh, one, by when your own cars are destroyed or by when um, other cars go, uh, of your opponent's uh, team go through gates before you do to help you balance out the game and be able to get back into the game. Audience votes are also earned in unique ways for each possible race team. Different race teams have different ways to earn audience votes. Uh, for instance, the Idris team can earn audience votes by moving really, really quickly in early gear phases, while the Warden team can earn audience votes when their own cars explode, which is kind of fun. So now, once you move beyond that, you're going to pick one of your vehicles, and since Lynn has pole position, she's going to choose one of her vehicles first. Now, the first thing you do is you pick which car you're going to activate. So Lynn, which car are you going to activate? Uh, this one. Okay. Then the next thing you need to do is you need to select a maneuver template. Okay, so here you can see all of our maneuver templates off to the side of the table, and that's where we return them to when we're done using them. Each of the maneuver templates are marked on them, what gears they can be used in, they have numbers on them, and they also have symbols on them that show that during certain gears they might give you a free shift symbol, or in other gears where they become difficult, they might give you a hazard symbol. There's also some extra templates over here, like the slide template, as well as the large and small templates, which are for weapons that you drop off behind you. Uh, those we might explain later when we go into attacks. But for now, without picking it up, she has to pick a maneuver template. As soon as she touches it and picks it up, that will be the maneuver she's doing for this car, which is going to be in gear one. So which uh, maneuver template are you going to pick for your car? Uh, the medium straight. Ah, the medium straight is the most commonly used template, and especially in the first few gears. Because in gears 1, 2, 3, and 4, you can use it, and it gives you a free shift, which is amazingly, amazingly useful. Okay, so now that you see that Lynn has placed her medium template, which gives her all those, uh, gives her the free shift, we're going to put a, a, we have these dice we've made ourselves, we're going to put one with a shift symbol down. And now being that this is a regular car, Lynn can roll three shift dice to see if she can get a nice combination of possibly up gear and do some good things. And she did. She's got, because of the free shift, she's got a total of three shifts and a hazard. So the hazard would give her one hazard token, which she'd put on that car's sheet to keep track of, where you keep track of your hazards and your damage and such. Uh, what are you going to do? Now, she, she could push it and re-roll it, but with such a good roll, I doubt you would. I'm going to use one shift to negate the hazard. All right, I'll remove that then. I'm going to shift up to the second gear mm -hmm. and then use the last shift to negate the hazard from shifting up. Very good. So you get, now with the signs of the dice, you get uh, shift results can allow you to shift up or shift down, but shifting will give you a hazard. Hazard results automatically give you a hazard. Spin allows you to move up to 90 degrees after your move. So after you get to the end of here, you can turn up to 90 degrees, but it gives you a hazard. And skid means you have to use that slide template here, putting it where the notch is on your movement template, and you'll have to turn sideways at the end of it and get a hazard. So these are things that you, you want to get rid of, and you can cancel them out with shift results. And also shift results, again, can be used to shift up and shift down. Now, on your, the, the sheet for this particular car, it would have had a die that was on the number one that now would have been moved up to number two. So it'll be able to activate again when we move on to the second gear phase, which is really good. But now that all that's done, she gets to move her car. And it is the first car, car to make it past the first gear. Gate. Now we keep doing like this and we take maneuvers, sometimes turning because we're going to have to eventually get around the obstacles over there. And once we pass the first, <clears throat> the first gate on the other side, we also get to activate our weapons. And then that adds in the attack step, which happens after the movement step, where you are able to attack other vehicles. Okay, so here we've jumped ahead and some of the cars made it up to the first gate. One car, one of Lynn's cars, has been the first to make it through the first gate, which means I got to get a free audience vote out of that. But now it's my turn to activate one of my cars. This car here, which at this point is in fifth gear and is, is, is pushing hard to try to get through the gate right behind that car. So I choose that car and I choose to activate it with the long straight, which can only be done in fifth or sixth gear and does not provide either free shifts or a hazard. So I'm going to place that down. 
in front of that car. Then I'm going to roll for it. Now this is a performance car. It gets four dice to roll. So I'm going to take four of the custom dice and I'm going to roll for it. So now I got two shifts and two skids. And I'm in fifth gear already. And this car has also already picked up a few hazards. It's at three hazards. I don't want to pick up a whole lot more hazards here because that could be a problem. So I'm going to keep one of the skids though because I like that. I'm going to cancel out the other skid and I'm going to get rid of one of my hazards, which means I'm not going to get to move in the sixth gear phase. Every time all of the cars get to move, after they're done moving, we move up the gear phase die. It's currently in fifth gear, but there aren't too many cars that are actually in sixth gear. At this point, the only car in sixth gear um, is one car that's a little further back. So, so this car, uh, being a regular car, has a maximum of five gears. So there aren't too many cars in sixth gear. It's not that big a deal that I'm not able to shift all the way up to sixth gear. I'd rather make sure I don't wipe out. But I did get to keep that skid, which will give me an extra hazard token, even though I just lost one, and it will make me have to slide. So I take the slide template and I put it here, which means I'm going to be going the way I want to go towards the next gate. It also means that since I've gone through this gate, my weapons are now active. So now during the attack step, I can attempt to attack the other car here. Now when doing attacks, you have to check if you're in range and if you're in line of sight to hit somebody. So ranges are done short, medium, and double. So with the, with the ranges, you check if, if you have a front arc weapon, like if you have a machine gun mounted on the front, the other vehicle would have to somewhere as you slide it along the front of the car, touch the template. So a front mounted weapon would be able to hit him here. If it's a side mounted weapon though, it would not because I cannot get it far enough forward as you see to touch the other vehicle. Rear mounted of course would be right out. Anything that would be on a turret, if you have a turret mounted weapon, could swing around in any direction. You use the appropriate size templates to check range and um, also weapons that are thrown by the driver or passenger can also be 360, so things like Molotov cocktails and grenades would be able to hit the other car. So in the case of this vehicle here, this is a performance car which only has one crew member and he is armed with Molotov cocktails, which since they are thrown have a 360 degree line of sight. They also use this medium template here. So as you see, I have range and now I'm allowed to attack. So a Molotov cocktail, I will roll one six sided die for to see if I hit. And I rolled a five. Now a four or a five is a single hit, a six is two hits. So now once per activation, my opponent is allowed to roll a die to try to avoid. They need sixes to avoid the hit. So Lynn is going to roll a die. And wow, she rolled a six. So I miss with the Molotov cocktail and do no damage. Now if I had hit, if I had hit, I would have done a damage to her car. And she would be on fire, so she would continue to take damage until she could put out the fire. And that's one of the special rules of Molotov cocktails. And all the different weapons have all sorts of different interesting special rules that they can do. But in this case, she actually dodged the hit and did not take damage. Now, there is one sort of attack that you can do at any point during the game, even before you pass the first gate, to activate weapons, and that is a smash attack. In other words, ramming the other car. So here we have the same car that had passed the first gate, and the faster car, the, the performance car, has managed to pull a little bit in front. But maybe the slower car wants to sacrifice itself to take it out, so the other cars on its team want to get a chance to do something. So in the same way, this car would be chosen during this gear phase to activate. It, it would pick the maneuver, and in this case, it's picking a maneuver swerve, which as you can see, is going to bring it right into contact with the other car. So it's going to roll its, its dice. Now, in this case, it decides not to because it's already got a, a fair number of hazards. It's going to get some extra hazards from the collision. It doesn't really need to gear up. It just wants to smash into the other car. They're both going at five, uh, fifth gear, so it, it's fine. So it's going to opt actually not to roll. Then what it's going to do is it's going to move along this path until it hits the other car, which is right about there. Now, the rule there's a rule in the game where whenever it's close and you're not sure if like you're hitting the rear or you're hitting the side, you always go with the one that would cause the most damage. And in this case, a T-bone would be a more damaging hit than a tailgate hit. The most damaging hit is a head-on collision. 
So now the person who controlled this dice, this car here, would declare, which this is Lynn's car, she would declare that she wants to do a smash attack because it's pretty obvious she wanted to hit the car. Now the other car can either do a smash attack back to try to do damage back to the car that hit it, or it could attempt to evade. And in the case of me, this is a performance car. They're very fast, but not very tough. I'm going to choose to evade because I want to get the heck out of there. I don't want to smash it back. So being that the attacking car is in fifth gear, uh, a T-bone hit means it gets to roll the number of dice equal to its current gear, so it would roll five dice. Now, if it was a head-on collision, you actually roll a number of dice equal to the combined number of both cars' gears, and in a tailgate attack, which is the least damaging, you roll the faster car's number of dice minus the slower car's number of dice. So sometimes that would take all the dice out of the equation. Now, bigger cars can be better at smashing smaller cars. These cars are both medium weight cars, so they're neither is bigger than the other. But if one car was larger than the other, we would get two extra dice, while the other car would get two le would get one less dice when trying to attack back. But none of that applies to this particular one, uh, particular collision, because these dice are both medium uh, cars. These cars are both medium cars. So Lynn, you're gonna roll your five dice. Here's some some dice for you. Let's see what you get. And the same the same rules apply. Fours and fives are hits. Sixes are two hits. Wow. Okay. So she got two fours, a six, and yeah. So that's four hits. That's that's huge. So four hits is really really good. Now I chose not to smash back, so I'm not going to do any damage to the scar. I chose to try to evade. So again, you get to do one evade during each activation. I hadn't used mine yet, so now I'm rolling for sixes to try to negate some of these hits. I got one six. I still take three hits. Now this car had already taken some damage before. And unfortunately, that was enough to total it. Now, in addition, both cars have to take two hazard tokens because there was a collision. If both cars had chose to avoid, no rolling would be necessary. There would just be no collision. This car would just stop. And then they would both take one hazard token for the, for the near miss that just happened. Now, it, they did collide and this car did get destroyed. And for being destroyed, what we have to do is we move the car directly forward a short distance as it spins out, flips over, and crashes. Then what we, if it becomes a wreck, we turn it upside down to represent the fact that it is now an a obstacle and no longer a vehicle on the field. And we check to see if it explodes. You roll a die, and you if you get a six, the car will explode. But you get plus one to your roll for every bit of ammunition for weapons that take ammunition, like Molotov cocktails, which this car had, to see if it explodes. Now, it had two Molotov cocktails left, which means on a four plus, it will explode. And I rolled a one, it does not explode. If it did explode, it would possibly do damage to the car that just rammed into it and killed it. But now, the next thing we have to see is the fact that this car was, was desperately trying to keep from getting enough hazards to, to flip out and it didn't succeed. Maybe it got too many hazards. Maybe on the next move it got too many hazards, however it happened. But when this has too many hazards, then we're going to have to check to, uh, to see if it wipes out, which happens after the wipeout step. So to check for wiping out, if any car has six or more hazard tokens on its sheet, it's going to have to make a flip check. So the player will roll a die and has to roll equal to or greater than the car's current gear, which it's in fifth gear, which means Lynn needs to roll a five or a six to stop this car from flipping over. Now, in this case, she rolled a six, which is amazing. So the car would still spin out, but not take damage. But let's say she had rolled a two, because we want to show you what would happen if she did flip over. So now, if it, she fails, she will immediately take two damage to the car, which is pretty bad. That's pretty damaging for a vehicle to take two damage. So she'd take two damage to the car, and then she would move a medium straight. This is regardless of whether she took the damage or not, because she, she's going to spin out. She moves a medium straight directly forward, checks to see if she runs into something. Thankfully, she wasn't pointed at the wrecked vehicle, so she doesn't run into that. If she did collide with it, she would, might have another collision. And obstacles like wrecked vehicles, buildings, boxes, etc., always count as declaring a smash attack when you run into them. Then she reduces her current gear to one. She removes all the hazard tokens from the vehicle and the next player clockwise around the table from her, which since we're just playing a two player game is me, gets to face her vehicle facing in any direction they like. I'm gonna face it facing the complete wrong way. 
and her car now has to wait for first gear to try to get back into this race. Okay, and here we can see the final thing you need to win, which is you have a car that can cross the finish line. So all the battling, all the damage that has happened, this car has made it through relatively unscathed and without too many hazard tokens, and he takes a move that brings him across the finish line. And that's Lynn's car, so Lynn would win this game in this particular scenario. We actually chose to have this car win because the first game we played of this, Lynn won it with this car. So that is how you play a game of Gaslands, and that's how you win a game of Gaslands. So at least for the death race scenario. So now we're going to head back to the table. I'm going to talk about how this game feels and plays. I'm going to read it and review it, and we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. Welcome back. So that was how you play a game of Gaslands. Now, first thing I want to talk about is the book itself. So there are a few issues I have with this book. Mainly that is some some issues with the editing, some some errors that are in here. Now, mostly they're not with the the rules themselves, and and they are handling them pretty well with the errata. They have an errata up on their website, which which has altered the rules for the. Uh, the death race scenario, for instance, which we were showing here, it starts. It used to be that your weapons got activated as soon as you crossed the starting line, which was originally in the book labeled as gate one, but now they've changed that. And that actually, in my opinion, greatly improves death race because that whole first stretch not being able to use guns is really, really cool. Now, um, there's also some issues, and my biggest issue is with the sample race lists so you have in here lots of different options you have the different kinds of vehicles and there's lots of kinds of vehicles you've got cars you've got buggies you've got motorcycles you have trucks uh performance cars monster trucks tractor trailers uh buses all sorts of different things you can take even some flying vehicles though they can't win the race for you they're just to give you like fire support so and then you also have upgrades. You can take upgrades to the car to make the driver like a maniac that, that instills fear in other people. You could take weapons on the cars. You can take extra armor on the cars. And all of that has a point-based system called cans. It's cans of gas that are the currency that you use to buy your team. Now, after they tell you how to do this, they have a couple of sample lists in this book. And this is my biggest gripe, is that two of the lists are actually not valid by the rules they just told you. So now... This is not too big an issue because the rules are fine. It's just the example that's the error. And they did they did uh, address it in the fact. They did let you know, yes, whoops, we made a mistake. Disregard those two lists. But that's probably the biggest gripe I have. Otherwise, this book is great. There are a lot of uh, great sections with storyline. The rules are simple and easy to understand uh, and fun. And I mean, this is really for me. This is this is a very big like beer and pretzels kind of game. Now, with the movement templates, you might be saying to yourself, "This reminds you of another game." And whether that other game is X Wing or Attack Wing or Wings of Glory or Sails of Glory or whatever it might be, yeah, there's a bunch of other games out there. This new burgeoning family of games that really started with Wings of War, which later turned into Wings of Glory. I think was the first one that that did this maneuver template game this is a very a dis a very interesting and different addition to that family of games so you have a bunch of them that are dogfighting type games which are the games like wings of glory which is dogfighting either in world war one or world war two using fighter planes you have x-wing which is dogfighting in in the star wars universe you have the um you also have uh the new Battlestar Galactica game, which is very similar. And then you have bigger ship battle games like uh, Star Wars Armada and Sails of Glory, which are big lumbering ships that try to maneuver and hit each other. But this is the first one where it's a race game. Now, there are other ways to play this game. There's, there's scenarios in here that are just basically like Demolition Derby or car combat, like the old video games Twisted Metal, for instance. But the race game is really, in my opinion, what sets this game apart playing death race makes this game feel 
really different and sets it really apart from those other games. It's it's so far the only scenario I've been playing. We never roll random. We just keep playing the race game because we really like the race. It makes it feel different. It makes it feel fun. The other thing that sets this apart is that most of those other games are fairly expensive to collect and get into. Whereas in this, if you don't want to get into customizing vehicles, if you just want to find vehicles in the store that look like what you want them to represent and just buy them, which is what I've been doing, this is the most affordable entry point to any of these types of games I've ever found. Because, I mean, Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars are like a couple bucks each. They're very affordable. And the book itself, in the United States, it's 19 US dollars. In Canada, it's 25 Canadian dollars. And in the UK, it is 11.99 pounds. So this is a very affordable book, very affordable vehicles to buy. It, and and the, the templates are kind of DIY. They have, they have them in the back of the book, so you can copy them. They also have in the back of the book the, the, the race sheets for your particular uh, vehicles, so you can copy them. But they have them for free for download on the website, and you can print them out. And some other people have done ones with cool illustrations on them. The ones I had here I found over on Board Game Geek, where someone had done some really cool illustrations and put them up on Board Game Geek. So go and check those out if you want to. Um, and... Yeah, there, there's tons of stuff to support this, and it's all very affordable. From the, the DIY templates uh, to the fact that even though I, I made my own custom skid dice, you can use regular six-sided dice, and there's there's a chart in here that tells you, okay, what each of the numbers means. Now, I just bought some cheap blank dice and used permanent marker to put the hazard symbols and the skid symbols and the and the shift symbols and the, and the, and the spin symbols on them, and it works just fine. They also have some actual custom skid dice you can buy from then if you really want to shout a few more bucks for it. But all in all, I think the the second thing, other than the race scenario, that really makes this game stand out is its affordability. This is a much lower price point than getting into something like X-Wing or Battlestar Galactica, Starship Battles, or um, Wings of War or Sails of Glory. Now, I like a lot of those other games. Specifically, I'm a huge fan of Sails of Glory and I'm a huge fan of Star Wars Armada. But they're expensive. Star Wars Armada, in particular, is a very expensive game to get into. And sometimes it gets really hard to find the right miniatures, whereas this is very forgiving in what sorts of miniatures you can use for this, because just any Hot Wheels cars are doable. In addition to providing a lot of support for this and constantly facking it to make sure that everything's balanced and good, they've provided some free downloadable expansions online with more types of vehicles to use and more types of scenarios. So this is a really well-supported game, very affordable, very fun, and even though there's lots of damage you can do to each other, there's been times where we've played races where we've done nearly or even no attacks to each other because we've just focused in on the racing where we've both made race teams that were all about speed. And that's actually happened and it's still amazingly fun because you're still trying to outmaneuver each other and even with almost no attacks, you're still going to wind up ramming each other once in a while. It's going to happen. This is a really fun game. I think it... it has earned an, its own spot in this family of maneuver template miniature games. A spot that is very different and distinct from the other maneuver template miniature games that are out there. And in case you couldn't tell, I do really like this game. I'm giving Gaslands 8 out of 10 stars. I'm really enjoying it. I love the race scenario. I love, I love rummaging through Hot Wheels cars at the supermarket now to find cars that, that look like they have weapons that I don't already have. Um, I've been searching for certain cars that I see online. And yeah, I've been really liking this. And Lynn's been playing it a lot with me too, which is a bit of a surprise because she's not normally into miniature games. So that being said, let's check in with Lynn. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to Gaslands? Seven. So seven is a very positive score. That means she likes this game a lot and will play it anytime someone asks. And that's really surprising considering that it is a miniature style game. But she told me that it's, it's really because it's not just about fighting each other. It's not just about, and, and she's not at all interested in playing the Demolition Derby scenario or, or, you know, like the car combat scenarios. She likes the race scenarios because racing each other and trying to be the first one through the finish line is what really, it, it's what does it for her. It's what makes it really interesting. And you know what? It's what does it for me too. So there you go. Both of us highly recommend that if you have a few bucks and you like, um, if you like miniature games but are looking for something different 
And if you were a kid and you used to like to play with Hot Wheels cars, I mean, check this out. This is a really, really brilliantly done product. I thoroughly enjoy it. I can't sing its praises enough. Eight stars for me, seven stars from Len. Overall, for its for its price tag, this is this is like you gotta you gotta add this to your collection. I'm just saying. All right, there you have it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns either on the game of Gaslands or this video, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this review and tutorial and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.